Welcome, everybody, for tuning in tonight on this episode of Stream Miami, a different kind of talk. And that's what we do here every single time, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, trying to have a very in-depth personal conversation with every single entertainer in the nation. I am on my 31st episode, and I want to remind you all that tomorrow, Wednesday, I will have here a former Mr. Gay US of A, Michael LaMasters. And on Thursday, I have the legendary Jasmine Bonet. But tonight, it's a great night because um, I interview one of my good friends. We've known each other for a, for a few years, and she's an icon in the community, a legend in the art field, and of course, a figure in, in the world, an international uh, drag sensation, and that is Roxy Andrews. Hi. Hey, girl. Oh my God, it just started storming so crazy here. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Really? I'm doing great, yeah. I'm doing great. You know what? We have a delay again, so you know what okay. we're gonna do. Yeah, let's we... do that really quick so we can just, yeah. When we have a delay, we have to like switch out and then come back really quick, you know, this technology uh, works like that. But I'm very excited, um, this is gonna be, a uh, great interview. We're going to touch base on every single aspect of Roxy's life. I don't think she's ever done this type of interview before. Everything is always drag race and, and drag race and more drag race. But tonight, we're going to have a little piece of her. Um, and we're going to get um, a more in-depth and personal conversation with Roxy. You ready? I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I hear you fine. It's just that sometimes we have a little delay. So I don't know. It might be the connection. It's but a it really is, bad it storm right now, too. Oh, that's probably what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know what, Roxy? I have four pages of oh. material to go through with you. It's okay. crazy. I, I, I was very excited, you know, working on your interview, and I just want to get started right away. So okay. um, let's just go on with our first segment. Let's do it. I look great in that picture, don't I? Yeah, you do. <laughs> We're gonna. I'm gonna ask you a, a few questions, and I want you to give me a, a fast answer. So we're gonna do a fast round. Just give me a short answer about um, the questions that I'm gonna ask you. You ready? Mm hmm Let's do it. Morning or night? Night. If you could be an animal, what would you be? A tiger. Favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, cookies and cream. Favorite color? Blue. What do you wear to sleep? Nothing. <laughs> what is your favorite go-to drag garment? My favorite drag garment? Something rhinestone. Yeah. Pizza or pasta? Pizza. Now tell me, in no such a short answer, how did you choose the name Roxy? Roxy was actually the first nightclub I ever went to here in Orlando. It was a teen night, and uh, me and all my friends went and... I knew when I finally got into drag, I was like, I need a good name. Oh my God, the first nightclub I ever went to. So I named myself Roxy and the three X's came from my friend here in Orlando that was like, cause I was like a club kid to start. And she was like, you need a little something extra, do the three X's. <laughs> so I said, okay, so that's where Roxy came from. Um, it's crazy. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of people here. Yes. So we're gonna say hi to a, a few people, Junior. Uh, Chantel DeMarcus here, uh, Winnie oh, Mac thanks, is thanks. here, um, Scott Holland is here, Daddy Andrews, uh, all these people. So, Hi, Mr. Uh, Continental. I want to uh, get started with a lot of information that I, and, and I'm just like, I, I'm gonna just dig in your brain. So uh, let's get deep for a moment. Let's dive in and let's begin with your, with your past and your personal life. My past and my personal life. Well, I'm from North Miami Beach, Florida. Um, I grew up there with um, my grandmother and grandfather, and we moved to Orlando when I was 13, and I've been here ever since. So I, I always tell people I grew up in Orlando. So but Miami was let amazing. Me ask you, let me ask you about that. Hold on. Uh -huh. Because um, you, you mentioned to me, I mean, you don't know your biological mom. I do not. And Well, I know her. I don't know where she is or her where yeah, you, you have no, yeah you have no knowledge knowledge of where her whereabouts right now and you're you're the people in your dad's family they don't speak 
So this concept that of family life and, 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 and a family oriented environment, it's very non-insistent. It was never, you know, part of your life of you mm -hmm. growing up. So explain to me how, how this was, explain to me how, how, what do you mean by that? Okay, so until I was three, you know, it was a very, like with my regular, like my biological mother, it was a very abusive, abusive household to us, me and my sister. And, you know, that's how I grew up. So when I was three, we, like I said, on Drag Race, we went to a bus stop. She said, she'll be right back. She got on the bus, never came back. That evening, I guess they were searching for us or whatnot. That evening, they found us at the bus stop, so on and so forth. So instead of us going to, we did go to an orphanage, me and my sister, to a boy's home and a, and a girl's home. And then, um, which is really crazy because at that age, you don't think you're going to remember things, but I like remember it. But um, uh, my grandfather and grandmother adopted us legally. So they became our parents. And um, yeah, they, they, I had the best upbringing after that. And this is your but, grandmother is your dad. That's your dad's mother. Everybody on my father's side. Whenever I say uncle, aunt, grandfather, something, it's always on my dad's side. I I know absolutely not none of my other siblings because I know I have more siblings. I know like either half brothers or sisters or whatnot, but nobody on on the other side of the family do I know. How how's the relationship with your dad? No relationship with dad. What, um, no relationship with any family. Um, right now, you know, it's everybody always looks at me, and this is going to the future, but I'm very strong, independent person. Oh, thank you, Piggy. I'm a very strong, independent person, but it comes from my past because I've always grown up to be an independent person. I'm very hard. I'm very strong, you know, with the mentality that nothing's going to break me. You know, I've always come off that way. So a lot of people see it as cocky. A lot of people see it as, you know, a strong person, but it all comes from, you know, either being left or neglected or you know, all of that. It just makes you a stronger person. So your, your dad, you mentioned to me that your dad, you know, was in and out of jail. He was, you know, uh, he, he suffered a, a little bit. Out of, he went of, to jail uh, for involuntary, involuntary manslaughter, which was just a car accident, but that's what he went in for. And he spent most of his life. My dad was, when I was younger, my dad was always like a brother figure, like showing me porn and those fun, fun things that, you know, you don't really do with your kids. He was always a brother, an older brother to me. And um, he spent a lot of time in jail, my uncle as well. They did drugs, they partied. And that's why I don't drink alcohol and don't do drugs and stuff like that. Because when I grew up, I always said, for my grandmother taking us in, oh my God, so many people don't know this, but for my grandmother taking us in and my grandfather, I said that I was never gonna be that to them. Cause I saw how they reacted to having to bail them out and having to go find out where they are or go where, where, where they are in general. And I said, I would never do that. So I just never went that direction. Um, your father came back, you know, after jail and, and, you know, he kind of yes, started he playing up his act. Um, he came back and, you know, here I am thinking, I think I was like probably like 13, 14, 15 time. I don't remember exactly when, but you know, when he finally got out of jail, I think he served like 10 years or something like that. My sister and I were expecting, you know, Oh, here's our father. Now he's going to come out. No more drinking, no more drugs, which he has stuck to till this day. But it was, we lost that aspect. It, it became, he came out and now found his new life. And it wasn't like, let me make up for what I missed. It was always like, you were always a second thought still. And by then I was like, I'm just not even going to deal with this. He didn't live with us or anything like that. He went on his own. So I just, to me, I never had a father either. <laughs> do you, do you resent him for that? I do, but you you have to when you hold on to resentment, you become a bitter person about that kind of stuff. So I tend to let everything go. And it and it's a bad thing. You know, and I wish I wasn't that way, but when bad things happen to me, I just okay, moving on. Like I always just keep going forward. I, that's how I've always lived my life. And it, it like I said, to me it's a bad thing, but that's it's uh it's uh what word am I looking for? Like uh uh, uh like I'm protecting myself. Do you feel like if you go back and revisit that same exact situation, you know, you're afraid of getting hurt? Am I afraid of getting hurt? Yeah, if you go back to those situations and try to revisit or talk about it or, you know, that kind of stuff. I live with no regret. And I feel like, I just said, I always move forward. So I always leave the door open. If Thank you. If, I always leave the door open if... My number has not changed since I was 17. I'm 36 years old. 
If you knew me in high school, I still have the, the same phone number. If you wanted to know my whereabouts, know how I'm doing, give me a Christmas present, be a father, my number's never changed. My address didn't change till recently. You know what I mean? Like they know where he's been to my home when, you know, the random stop by to act like you care. And it, it's like, I've never left. So it, it just, there's no, he didn't put in any effort. So why am I? Um, you moved out. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about school for a moment. Um, so you, you didn't have any kind of problems at school. You were always very popular. And I you were was always very accepted, you know. The token gay. <laughs> the so token tell, me, gay. tell me a little bit about your experience during high school. Okay, so in high school, it was my sister, who to me is the super Cuban part of our family. She was blonde hair, green eyes, white girl. But she would dye her hair burgundy, hang out with all the Latins. You know, they it wasn't in a bad way, but they would call them the mira miras in high school. And I hung out, I worked at Abercrombie. I hung out with all the white kids. But I was always, thank you, I was always in, like, I was always hanging out with everybody. And so it was my sister, but we were two very different kind of crowds in the school. So I was, I was the thespian president, act, thank you. I, I like to act and do things like that in school. So it was just her crew and my crew that mixed. But overall in high school, it was such a blessing that I had the upbringing that I did because I was a popular kid. I had my own car, which they always make fun of me and my friends because I got my car my senior year. And I was like, well, I don't have to count on anybody because now I can drive myself everywhere. See, and that goes to stemming to my childhood. I'm always so independent that when I got my own car, that's what I said in the yearbook. I was like, I can't, I, the best thing that happened to me was getting my car because now I don't have to count on anybody. And if you think about it, it all goes, everything in my life goes back to my childhood. And uh, I mean, so does that, and does that, does that bother you? That you have no. maybe someone finished business or something? Mm -mm. Not at all. When you when you graduated, that's good. That's good. Um, when you when you graduated high school, you know you were just uh, eighteen. Actually, before you you began your senior year, you moved out. Yes, and I you got, started living on your own. Well, my grandfather was a veteran, and he passed away when I was like 11, 12 years old, and we had a, a pension trust fund set up from 18 to 21. So every year we got a certain amount of money. So I turned 18 on the beginning of my senior year. So first thing I knew, I wasn't out, like I was out to my friends, I wasn't out to my family yet, but I just wanted to be out. Like, so I got my own apartment, I got my car. Like I was living on my own because, not because I hated living with my grandma and my sister and stuff, it's because I was just so ready to explore the world. Cause I knew myself, I'm a gay man. I want to go to gay clubs. I don't want to answer to nobody. You know, so I was just so excited to be on my own rather than people thinking it was because I was running away from home. I wasn't. I was just so ready to, you know, do my own things. You came out around 20 when you were about 20 years old. When you came 20 out. Years old, I came out to my mom. To your well, she mom. She came out to me. My mom is my grandmother. Anytime I right. reference my mom is my grandmother. So, so tell me, how, 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 how did that happen? How did you come out to your grandmother? Well, she actually, I was out to my sister, I believe. I was out to all of my friends. And I think when I was like 19, 20, she came over to my house that I was living with, with one of my friends, Blade Matthews. It was my first roommate situation ever. And uh, she came over one day and we we're outside, like walking around the, the house or something. And she just stopped out of nowhere. And she goes, Michael, you're gay, right? <laughs> and I said, yeah. She goes, <laughs> okay. She's like, you know, I still love you. And I was like, oh, well, I love you too. <laughs> it was just so nonchalant. I was like, oh, this is what everybody talks about. Like I said, I, I was always so blessed in that aspect. You love your grandmother. She's been such a great part of your life and, um, you know, I, and, and basically the key to your upbringing and everything who you are. But there is an episode and this is something that you have not shared publicly with anyone um, in January last year, after 30 plus years of your grandmother always being there, um, especially with your sister and your nephew. Um, mm -hmm. She just got up and she left. You haven't spoken to her since. You don't know where she is. You have you haven't gotten a call. You don't know you don't know where she is or anything about that. What happened and how did this situation change your life in this past year? Okay, so I feel like everything in my life just goes in circles. So like I, the last thing I had was my grandma and my sister, my niece and my nephew. My nephew was one year, one year old, not even, like about a year old. I'm really bad with times and years. You'll see me say somewhere in 17, 18, so I never know days. But um, January of last year, she 
I got a call from my sister and she said, mom left. And I said, what do you mean mom left? Where is she? Like at the store? What's, what's going on? She's like, no, Michael, they packed their bags and they left. My niece, who was about to turn 18, her, my sister's daughter, and my grandmother got in the car that I bought her and left. Come to find out, I called her and I said, well, what's going on, you know, on the cell phone that I paid for? And, you know, I paid monthly, a, a, a lovely check every month to her. Anyways, so um, she called me, or I called her and I was like, well, what's going on? Blah, blah. She said, Michael, I can't take it anymore. And I said, well, what's going on? She's like, I just don't want to pay for this house anymore. Mind you, the house we've lived in since I was at 13. She's been paid for it, refinance it, whatever. That's stupid. But um, she said, I don't want to pay for this house no more. I just want to live on my own. This and this and that. I'm taking Christina, my niece, and I'm leaving. Okay, long, long story short, basically my sister and my nephew were gonna be put out on the street. My sister has a disability and my nephew was one years old. And I said, well, what do you mean? They're, you're just gonna let them take the house? Like, where's my sister gonna go? Well, she's 38 years old, she can figure it out. I'm like, she can't figure it out. She's, she has a disability, she can't just go get a job. She cannot work a regular job. And um, you know, she has nothing. She has literally no money to her name. Mind you, she had, I think a semester left to graduate from UCF. Anyway, so she had to drop all of that. They were basically homeless. So I had to take them in because there was no other choice. And I've yet to hear from my mom. I've yet to hear from my niece. I've yet to hear with my father and all that stuff. I, once again, we were left. How, this time how with are one dealing, year old child. How are you dealing with this emotionally? Keep moving. Keep moving. At this point, it's very uncomfortable for me. Not uncomfortable because I love my sister and I love my nephew more than ever. The best part is that I get to see my nephew grow up because they're here right now and they've been with me. Um, for over a year. Um, I get to see my nephew grow up. Amazing. Um, I just want to see my sister on her own. So she fought for disability. Now she gets a disability check. And, you know, my nephew ended up being autistic. So, you know, they're working on that and stuff. So I just want her on her own two feet. And I'm trying to help her do it the way I did it. Because I know how to save money. I know how to take care of myself. I'm just trying to teach her, which is hard because she always had that, you know, grandmother figure. She was always taken care of because of her disability and stuff. She was always taken right. care of. And now she's all on her own, basically homeless. So that's why I moved into a bigger home so that they can have their own bedrooms and stuff because they were sleeping in my couch for a year. Right. And him in a crib, because he was a baby. You know, you have gone through some traumatic and life-changing experiences in your life. You know, someone told me one time that uh, hurt translates into anger. Do you believe that this is your case? Absolutely. Do you feel you 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 have this anger sometimes you feel like you have you know that's the way you express your hurt I don't express anger I feel anger Right Does that make sense Yes Like so instead of acting on the anger I'll just get upset at myself Right Is that, that that's just how I deal it's so weird cuz it's not like I want to jump off a bridge or anything cuz I'm so angry with myself but I always I I'm so harsh on myself all the time that dealing with that's the only way I know how to deal with it so to me and my, it's kind of sick because when this happened, it was like chop, like she got the chop. Okay, now my grandmother's chop, who else is chop, bitch? My niece, chop. Like, it's just how I deal with it. Am I sad? Absolutely. Did I want to lose more family? No, I have had this this many people in my family, you know? It, it's just chop, 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 chop. Let's keep moving. What's next? What's And I, my business is what keeps me busy. Is and I, I, I know, for. I know you're the kind of person that just, you know, I move forward, let's go. You know, I don't, I, that's not... I live with no regrets, et cetera. But you know, how do you how do you deal with it? What is what is that what is that factor that makes you say, I have to get up and go, you know, and 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 move forward? You know, what what is it? What's the reason? Drag. I feel like drag has saved my life. And I've never said that, but it is really like people are like, my friends will make fun of me. They're like, girl, you do too much, girl. Why are you stoned so much? Why you got eight thousand wigs? And you every time you're even through this pandemic, I just make making costume after costume after costume because that's the way that I express it. When I'm angry and I'm frustrated, I'm gonna go make art out of it, you know? And that's that's how I've always expressed it. And is that healing my problems? Not at all, but it's the only way I know how to deal with them. Do I lash out on people at times? Sure, everybody does. But I always try to fix things when I make them wrong, like make them right. What scares you? Being alone. My whole life I've been alone. So like, Oh, bitch, we're not doing this. But, yeah. 
do you have you ever fallen in love? I have. <laughs> Tell me about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. What no, are you drink? Not. What are you drinking? What are you drinking? I have. Um, love is so hard with what we do. Um, you have a drink with you? I do. But what are you drinking though? Uh, I think <laughs> oh. water with crushed ice, my favorite. Tell um, me about it. Tell me about you falling in love. Love. I want so badly to be in love and to be able to share, you know, my life with somebody. It's just every single time it's either their baggage and I'm like, okay, well, I'll deal with your baggage because I'm always a fixer. I'm always like, let me help them. Let me, you know, and a lot of queens are. Thank you. A lot of queens are that way. It's like, I, I like to help people. So like, I'll find somebody that, you know, needs to get their shit together and wants to get out of their mom's house or something like that. And I'm like, okay, this is how you do it. I've been here. And I try to express to them, I've been here. This is how you do it. Do this, do this, but not being like a dad because nobody need, wants to date their dad. So I'm like, this is what you have to do. And I, I love that in a relationship. And also I love like getting to know somebody and express, you know, my innermost secrets with them and things like that. But then at the end of the day, it's like, I guess, because I've dated so young <laughs> that they end up you know, either wanting to go or I have to break it off because I know they need to venture out somewhere else. Like I see the stress. If, if they're, like there was one guy I dated. That I'm like, this is just too much for you. You're fighting with your family. You're going to school. You're trying to make this relationship work and you're 20 years old. Like, don't do it, Tiffany. <laughs> no, he's not going to do it. Um, But yeah, so that's how relationships have always been for me. And I, every time I get into one, I'm like, oh, well, let's see how long this one lasts. Are you single now? You know? I am. Are you talking to anybody? I'm not talking to anybody. Usually I'm flirting with somebody. Nobody, girl. <laughs> do you, do you want to talk to somebody? Who? Well, I'm just saying. I'm just asking, you know. There's I people would, watching. I always wanted to be in a relationship. And it's like, I have my shit together. And I said, I would even date a queen. I'm like, as long as you got your shit together, like, I don't put it against nobody because I don't want a, a butch queen or a boy queen to think that, you know, I'm going to judge them because they do drag. Because, bitch, I do drag. But when this comes off, I'm not Roxy unless I'm with my girlfriends. Then I'm like, Miss Thing, girl, yes, mama, that dress, that, it's all that. But when I'm with my man, it's a whole different person, you know? So, so. I'm going to play a clip. Um, oh, Lord. So that um, it, it's a statement that you have made before, and I want to ask uh, you a question about it. But make sure you tap on the thing. I never judge anybody for their past. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that have to do certain things in their life that they regret, and uh, somebody did do that on this show, then uh, I know it's something that they wouldn't do in the future, and it's maybe a dark time in their life. We've all had our own skeletons in the closet. We all have had our own skeletons in our closet. Uh-huh. So what are yours? The story. My story. Because I've never shared that with anybody. And to go... What's funny is that that season is when how that happened on the runway is we did the lip sync and I get super emotional. So after the lip sync, nobody is ever going to know what it feels like. I guess the closest thing is like being first runner up and the winner of a pageant standing there and waiting for them to call who the winner is. It's kind of like that when Rue says it's time to lip sync for your life, bitch, it's like your heart sinks. So I was on the runway. She said that. I said, OK, bitch, we got to get this the adrenaline, the emotion of the lip sync, like not the song, but actually doing it and having a chance of losing my dream in that moment was so overwhelming. And back then we filmed Untucked before we filmed the, the lip sync for the life. And in Untucked, we had talked about families and blah, blah, blah. So that was also weighing in my mind that, bitch, I just shared this and I was so nonchalant with it. The kids are going to read me because I just kind of like, oh yeah, I got dropped off, but my parents left me when I was young, blah, blah, blah. So I, I was overthinking that and girl, by the time the listen was done, I just started, you know, and the producers were seeing it. So they're looking at RuPaul, like, ask her what's wrong. Ask her what's wrong. She's breaking down. She's breaking down. And she's like, Roxy, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. Let's, let's just get her done. Like who's about to go home? No tea. And she just kept saying it and saying it. No, 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 honey. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's wrong. I was like, okay, fuck it. And then that's where I told my story. But those are my skeletons. Like I didn't, I didn't express that with nobody. I felt so ashamed. I felt like, you know, I already feel a lot of the times, like a lot of us, not good enough. And to have been left, you know, it all goes into that whole story again. You know, after after exposing yourself like that, I mean, that's something that you have never done before. After exposing yourself like that, you know, on an international level, like the whole world, of, then all of a sudden knew 
your most Everything. vulnerable, yeah, your most vulnerable part of you. How and how you did that change you? Share it? The way it changed me is that you want to share this. Okay. So like I've been holding on to that skeleton forever. None of my friends knew that. I never told people in high school. I never told my my best friends. Nobody knew those secrets. It was just I'm Roxy, I'm sick or Michael, I'm sickening. This I'm best being president, but nobody ever knew that. So me exposing myself was so amazing, but then comes the aftermath. Now they're mad because of Jinx Monsoon and they hate me because of the show. I know we're going to get into that, but so they used it against me. Now it's a joke. Oh, Roxy got, I'll get tweets even till this day of a bus stop and be like, where's Roxy? Like, if you're going to joke, that's not something to joke about. It's like right. the racial thing that's going on right now. And we're not going to get into that either. But a lot of people joke and they think it's funny and time has passed and, oh, I'm Raul. So I can say it because I know her like that. That shit's not fucking funny. Right. Like, stop saying it, you know, and sometimes on camera, like we had a little reading challenge on All Stars. And I think it was Katia that said, oh, something about the bus stop. And I laugh it off. But at the same time, bitch, I want to walk up and punch her because that's disrespectful. Like, right. how is that a joke? How is that funny to you that somebody got left? And they shared their deepest, darkest emotion on that runway. And you're going to take it and twist it and make it a joke. No, bitch, I can laugh with you, but I can't laugh at that. Do you, you regret know, saying it? To, because we're on television. What am I going to do? Cry when she says it? Do you regret sharing that? I do. I don't really. Uh, no, I take that back. Because of so many people who have written me that have gone through that. Michelle Visage is a person who has been adopted, like, through family, I believe. Um, I don't regret sharing the secret. I hate that the fans took it where they took it. That's right. the way I want to say it. Um, how did you start in the gay scene? Oh, girl. Um, Parliament House in Orlando. Bitch, the mid so, I was 17 years old. And Parliament House, if you guys have never been there, it has a courtyard outside. So, it's like an outside hotel beach courtyard. So you could be on premises and not be 18, I believe, or didn't have to show your ID. Right. I'm not trying to get Parliament House in trouble. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you never, since it was like a hotel, you never had to show an ID. So me and my friends got, we stole my mom's car, this little piece of shit car. We went to the Parliament House and, oh God, my sister doesn't even know this. But um, we went to the Parliament House and we sat outside. There's like tables and chairs and stuff. And we just sat there, girl. And there was a big window that was fogged up. It was like a like a mirroring on the window, but you could just see the dance lights going, bitch. And we were like, oh, girl, one day we're going to get in there. One day we're going to get in there. One day we're 17 years old, just big old sissy, just wanting to be in this fucking club. Little did I know this would happen, you know? Um, before you knew anything about drag or anyone in drag, who was that one queen that you first saw and just took your breath away? What's funny is it's Erica Norell. Erica Norell was at Parliament House I don't remember exactly what she was wearing, but it was red. It was red and like roses. I want to say like pasties and. I Wait, I can't hear you. Wait a minute. Okay, now I can. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had never seen something so beautiful, and not not disregarding the girls who had wor were working at Parliament House. It was just she was Cuban and beautiful. And we had Maya Andrews working at Parliament House, which was the beautiful, you know, girl that I got to know later. But that was just me, a sissy, walking around the bar because I didn't get dragged. I was like, what the fuck are they doing? What is this? Like, does she have a penis? Like, I didn't get it. They not scared me, but I was just like, okay, there's a queen. I'm good. <laughs> Erica Norell came out. <laughs> Baby Erica Norell came out, and I don't know what she was doing, getting a drink before her number or whatnot. And that was like, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> um, when did you develop that love for pageantry? Oh my, when I went to the review show at the Parliament House of Continental. Jimmy used to have a Continental review show. We were just watching it the other night, actually. And it was a part of my talent in one of my years at Continental Plus was seeing Yoshiko and all the girls there and Jimmy hosting it. It was like, what are these girls? So I'm not knowing, not really knowing anything about pageantry or drag. I paid to get a ticket. I went that night. I think I was by myself, probably with a roommate or something. And I was completely jaw on the floor. I had never in my life thought, like what, I just was so infatuated. I knew after that night, whatever that was is what I wanted to be. Like that's, I need to be that. What is that? <laughs> has has your weight ever been a struggle for you? Oh girl, <laughs> I have fluctuated weight my entire life. Like it's never been, it's been a struggle like getting it off when you get it back on and things like that. But it's been a good struggle because it's like you lose weight, you get praise for it. And then, you know, you might slowly get back into your old ways. 
not as bad, but then you'll gain 10 pounds and you'll be like, okay, bitch, now I got to turn it out and lose it again. You know, it's always been like that. Okay, well, you did bad. Now let's turn it out and lose more than you've lost before. You know, but there's always those times that where you lose too much and you're like, okay, well, I don't want to lose that much. So I want to get back to this period, but then it's harder this time. It's always been a struggle though. Um, well, it's time for a commercial and I want to, I just want to okay. make sure that I tell everybody um, that the commercial we're going to see, um, it's about one of our sponsors and the sponsors is my company. So my company is Vision Productions and I want to make sure that I tell everybody and I share this moment with you all um, because all of you ask me, you know, what do you do and why do you do the Stream Miami and this and that and the reason I do Stream Miami and I do these interviews with all these entertainers is to make sure that I elevate their character, their craft and I have a deep love for drag, for pageantry and for all of these people that I talk to. I have personal relationships with every single one of them but this is not my livelihood. So my livelihood is Vision Productions, which is my company and the sponsor of this show. And here's a commercial. That's Vision Productions. That's my company. That's, that's what I do sick, for a living. Man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm an event producer based out of Miami, Florida, and that's what I do for a living. Right now, our entertainment industry has taken a hit, and this is the reason why this platform is here. Um, but because we are not working, you know, our cash ups are on the screen. So if you feel generous and want to help out, you know, uh, we do help out also a lot of people. You know, this this is not only money that we pocket, you know, we use it to grow, not only this platform, but we use it to also help out other entertainers because there's a lot of girls doing their shows out there in their living rooms. And I know that Roxy dishes out, we dish out, we do everything we can for, you know, to help each other out. So I want to move on to our next segment because it's going to get real up in here. Oh Lord. Let's dive deep. <laughs> Let's talk about Erica Andrews. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Okay. When was the first time you saw her? Parliament House. I, it was Parliament House. She worked, and um, I think I saw her there like two or three times. And then the times that I started seeing her more often was at Revolutions here in Orlando, which is Southern Nights. But it was Revolution Nightclub. And they booked her. Um, I think it was like once a month or once every other week, Danielle Hunter was on cast and things like, yes, those times, <laughs> those times. Oh, my mama. And how did but, you, uh, how did you get to, you know, reach her, see her, talk to her? Well, I went out one night to, to revolutions and, um, she finally like walked up to me and was like, Miss Thing, you're gorgeous. And I was like, you know, trying to act like oh, bitch, I'm not here to impress you, but, like, I'm so excited that you're talking, but, bitch, I literally got in full drag. Every hair was in place just because I knew she was going to be there. And I always told myself, if I'm not, I'm either going to be an Aurel or I'm going to be an Andrews. Like, those were the two Erica's, like, that did it for me. And she told me I was beautiful and this and this and that, and Josephine O'Hara Andrews was working there on cast with her. Um, So one night, a couple weeks down the road, she told Josephine, if you watch her, 
I'm going to make her my daughter, but you have to take care of her because I don't live here. So you got to really be on top of her because, you know, Erica was very that mother. Like this had to be right. I, I would get read. She was really Joan Crawford, <laughs> like, but in a good way, not a beating way. <laughs> but she was very particular about her drag, which made her who she was. But um, she wanted you to always, it was always for you. She wanted you to look your best. She wanted you to do something with the name. And that's exactly what she told me. She said, just because you have my name doesn't mean anything. It's what you're going to do for the name. As she told many of the children, you know, I, I can give you an Andrew's name, but you can be the booger bus down the street. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean anything. But if you make something of yourself, then Andrew's means something. Um, so how did, you actually, <laughs> how did you actually become, you know, how did she become your drag mother? What was that moment? Like, what? how did she, that happen? That moment when she told Josephine and she told me that night, she goes, Miha, I want you to be my daughter. And um, I said, are you serious? She said, yeah. And I said, I have those earrings because <laughs> we would lend each other. Anyways, um, she said, I want you to be my daughter. And I said, are you kidding? And I literally was shaking like, it was like a dream come true. As silly as it may sound to some people, it was that legacy of Andrews, you know, Tandy before her, like it, it, it just meant the world to me. I, I knew then that my life, I was on my way to Continental for the first time. And a lot of people felt that she was trying to attach herself to me because I had a possibility, because I was a, a, not a big name because nobody knew me yet, but I was gonna be fierce competition. So they were like, oh, she's only giving you her name because of this and that, and I said, Bitch, I don't give a fuck if she wants to be give me my her name because I'm wearing green. I don't care. Like I'm gonna be her daughter. Right. And that's the history. That's what, what you, happened. What do you um what do you miss the most about her? Everything. Erica was like, oh girl. <laughs> yeah. It, it, she was just a person like they, it's indescribable. Oh girl, I'm not doing this. Yeah, indescribable. She was the driving force, you just said it, um, during your continental journey. She supported you every step of the way. And not just I me, wanna, everybody. But she especially you. Everybody. Especially you. And I wanna I wanna um watch some moments from this time. Okay. Roxy, did she have a good time, sister? Such a good time here in San Antonio. We thank you so much for coming out, and we want to wish you. I want to wish you. Everybody, we to say good luck, Roxy. Roxy, right now, she's going to Miss Continental Plus. Yeah. And so we're going to show you. She's going to win this year. Well, bitch, you better win. Yeah, good luck. Chris Cross. Chris Cross. There is no misery in not winning. Right. Trust. Never. Trust. Never. A lot of old dirty no, birdies. No Dolores. Ever. Never. No Dolores ever. Any. A lot of dirty old. Birdies. A lot of dirty old birdies trying to get the gig away from my daughter, but she's going to win this year. So good luck. Mm -hmm. Bitch, you are trying it. I always do. She was extremely proud of you. Extremely proud of you. And she was very local about it. We can see an example in one of her posts in April 7th of 2010, where she said, I'm very proud of you. You did it. The sky's the limit when you do what you want and believe in yourself. You did. All right. We're already working out on a new prelim in Austin, Texas. I'm looking forward to an amazing year. Team Roxy oh. Boots. I love you. There is a person who is the glue between your mother Erica in heaven and here with you on earth.
-huh. And that is Winnie Mac. That bitch. <laughs> she got no, uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so let's hear a message from Winnie. God damn it. <laughs> Hi, Roxy. I'm Winnie Mac. I'm here to make it clear. You're a star, baby. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for being an amazing friend, someone who I can trust. I know will have my back and is also my emergency contact. You have listened to me cry, provided me with sound advice, and then tell me that I'm being a girl. You are honest, genuine, loving, and most importantly, my family. You are my person now and forever. Erica would always tell me how proud she was of you. As we became closer, I saw what she saw in you. Your ability to capture the attention of your audience with your grace, your beauty, and your love for the art of drag. Your love for your family and friends is what captured my heart. Your love is just like Erica's. Big, bold, and beautiful. The way both you that and bitch, Erica I knew she meant message. Time, something I wish the world could feel. Sadly, when Erica was in the hospital, Drag Race started. I sat by her side and I told her about every episode, every single week, and told her how amazing you did until the day she passed. I knew she was proud of you. You will always have a special place in her heart as you will always have a special place in my heart. We were brought together by Erica and our bond was strengthened through time. May we have many more adventures together, whether it be you picking me up from a hotel after leaving me at the bar, because I deserve to have a good time too or swimming after turtles on one of our vacations with our GoPro snorkeling masks and getting our morning coffees together, or scaling down a mountain in the jungles of Hawaii, because the waterfalls are beautiful, and you believing in my little tiny short legs that they could scale back up the mountain. Whatever it is, I always want to do it with you. I hope that we find love one day, but if all else fails, at least we'll always have each other. I love you so much. But you are so trying. I didn't. I didn't get you together. She did. Um, she loves you so much, and she's like the glue. You know that has. I'm gonna read that bitch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that has bonded you both together, like you know, Erica and you, and and when you, it's just this one thing, the essence of Erica is in her every single time i mean and us who know her um we, we we can we can see it so tell me what winnie no bitch <laughs> just tell me girl winnie what's funny is a lot of people don't know like when erica passed like me and winnie were talking and of course we we're friends because of erica but me and winnie didn't become best friends till a while later you know down the road because I don't know. I don't know why. She was just always there for me as Erica's best friend, you know? But <laughs> see, I cry about this shit. I don't cry about family. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> change the subject let's um let's talk about oh let's just have a moment and let's play let's just play another video
Okay. You tried it. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, and I have two more questions, but I can't even ask you that because we're gonna go. Bitch. We're gonna get. We're gonna go through it. We're gonna go through it. But you know what? You all can try. Two try questions. Ugh. Um, I'm out of your fucking mess. Go ahead. What? What's T? <laughs> I said, bitch, you ain't gonna make me motherfucking cry, bitch. All right, let's let's <laughs> okay on, on that topic. Let let me ask you one more question. What? So what? What would you tell Erica Andrews now that you did not get you to really tell her when she was here? Erica had that personality where you just told her everything. So, like, I feel like after she passed, she's seeing everything. So, it's like when she was here, she knew everything that I was doing. And I feel like since she's passed, she's still watching over me. And it's not like she could talk back, but I still feel her with me, you know, with everything I do. And things like that. So, I feel like she still knows. The legacy. I shared, I shared everything with her. Like, she shared everything with me. And I shared everything with her. The Andrews legacy, it's a great one. And it's one to be admired. Everybody knows. The world knows. What do you want your drag kids to know when that you probably have not told them? But what would you tell them now? What would you want them to know? About me? No, just in general. What message would you have, you know, would you tell your drag kids now, you know, that probably you haven't had the chance to tell them? I've told them everything, you know, it's, it's, I have a very, like Erica told me to take it and run with it. Like, if this is what you want to do. And I tell younger Queens, even like, I always say family, family, just because your name is Andrews does not make, does not make you my family. Family is contacting someone. Family is talking to them. Even if it's not every month, every day, every week, a reach out to them. My, a lot of my family does not share the same name. Angelica's in here. Tashe, like those are my family and I can go on and on. We don't share the same last name, but of course I do have Andrew's family and I have my real family. And like, so I always tell them, reach for the stars, learn how to do it. If you want to do something, do it and grab the bull by the horns. Like I knew when I got into drag that I was going to be that newcomer pageant. I won it. I knew that I wanted to be, you know, the state title. I did it. Then I wanted to be continental. i never gave up. I went and did it. You know, it was just, if you want to do it, set your mind to it. Be the best at, that you can be at it. If you're not the best dancer, then bitch, go another route. I'm not a fucking dancer, but I, I went another route with my career and what I wanted to do. And that goes for everybody. Find what you're good at and be the best at it. It's funny that you tell me that because I spoke to your firstborn child and he told me exactly the same thing you said. So let's hear. Hey, Roxy, this is Axel. Your firstborn and only son, I just wanted to take a minute and uh, just express how thankful I am for you. Um, all of the different talents that you've taught me over the years, all of the guidance in and out of drag um, that I will never forget ever. Um, you know, it's been over 10 years now that we've been friends and uh, you've allowed me to really be who I want to be instead of shape me in the image of what you thought I should be and to have someone so well respected uh, and loved and polished um, allow me to do what I wanted to do is really something special and I will never ever forget that um, I hope you are enjoying this interview and I love you very much mm -hmm. what is the biggest lesson that your kids have taught you Oh my God, to keep, stay young, bitch, <laughs> like to stay relevant to, you know, they told me there's Cara, like, you know, when, when we're together, it's like, you know, oh, bitch, you turned it. We lift each other up because nobody is ever perfect. Nobody's ever going to have that perfect costume, perfect hair. Well, girl, you need to fix your hair. That's not working. Like, you know, and I'll tell Cara all the time as the girl, I'll be like, Miss Thing, that hair in the back, do it. And she learned, she's just like Axel. I taught Axel how to sew basics and he took it and ran with it. He does things I can't even do. You know what I mean? And that's how it should be. And Cara is the same way. She's a performer like no other. Like, and the beauty, forget about it. Like, but she does her own version of her. She's not trying to be me. I'm not trying to be this one. You know, and Axel's not trying to be anybody else. He set the mold for his own character and has one of the best in the nation, I say, you know, to what he does. 
you want to be unique. You want to be special. I want to ask you um, uh, a couple of questions and just tell me yes or no. Are you okay. stuck up? Am I stuck up? No. Are you selfish? I'm confident. Am I selfish? At times. Tell me some of the misconceptions that people have about you. A lot. From the TV show? Just in 90 general. 90% of that television show. I'm thankful for the opportunity. Everything you saw was real. It wasn't. It, it, I, it, everything that I said came out of my mouth. But I want them to think about when it came out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a pageant girl, so I went in guns blazing. Back then on RuPaul's Drag Race, it's a different drag race than it is now. I saw my competition, and when I saw my competition, the only way I could get her was going another route than what she was doing. I went underneath and tried to, you know, get in her mind. Mind games was what I was trying to play with her because I couldn't get her for the talent that she had. So they saw a version of me that is not who I am. So then I went on All Stars. Much better, but now, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. And a lot of people after all stars were yay. Now we love Roxy to me. The worst compliment you could give me is bitch. I used to hate you. And then I saw all stars and now I like you girl. Don't say that to me. Like, because I'm still the same person. I was the same person on all stars. I just wasn't playing the mind games. So the, yeah. Does that answer? <laughs> yes. Um, but that's you a big know, misconception that I'm a, that I'm cunty or I'm a bitch because of what you saw on television. What you saw on television is not the real, the real me, you know, and it's hard to say because that's what they played. But if you saw right. the entire show for what it was, you wouldn't think the same thing. Right. Um, so I asked your sister, Tashe, you know, who you were. And this is what she had to say. Oh, well, Roxy you. and Juice, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, hell, what can't you say? <laughs> She's my big sis, one of my top role models. And one of my best friends. I lost one of my best friends back in February. And it was very, very hard for me. Still is. And Roxy has been there with me the entire time. Let me stop. I start crying, child. And everybody knows I'm not a crier. And can we let's not forget that Roxy is fucking sickening. The bitch is sickening. I love you so much, big sis. And I'm so proud to be able to call you one of my best friends. Now keep up the good work. And all that good job. But I'm done blowing smoke up your ass, so you all right. Woo -da -boo. <laughs> but yeah, I love you, sis. Mwah. That's the best how her too. Yeah. <laughs> that's touche. Yeah, that's touche. Baby, I've known you for a long time. Uh, for a long uh, time. Yes. Now, um, you know, like Tashe said, you've always been very sickening. I mean, your fashion, your looks, your drag the way that you just carry yourself. I mean, you just have evolved into this like human being, you know, and this drag I'm creature. The most, I'm the most self-conscious and, and like, like, how do I say it? Like I have, I, I don't see that. Right. Does that make sense? Right. I don't see what other people see right. all the time. But your fashion is always on point, baby. You see that. But I'm, my, I'm my worst critic. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm my worst critic. You Where can, do you get your inspiration, for example, to get your looks? Everywhere. I, anytime I want to make an outfit, I'll look up Beyonce. Like, I'll be like, okay, Beyonce, that's Cardi. That slingshot is very Mimi Marks. Mimi Marks, the, the orange, that's Mimi right there. Like, that has always been, you know, the pussy, pussy girl. I'm going to turn it. Like, I've already, Jessica, Erica, the burlesque, all those looks, that's all Disney shit. <laughs> Marilyn. But, I don't even know. A lot of people are like, well, how did you make this? I don't know. When I need to make something, look, I don't know how to make a spiked belt for Lady Gaga or a mermaid tail. I've, half the things I make, I've never made before, ever. But I never take, I take the challenge head on. I don't say I can't. I never say I can't. You know, and that's how you have to be. If you think you can do it, you can do it, bitch. Yeah, you might mess up, but keep going. Like all those costumes, bitch, I don't know. How did you paint for Shrek? I don't know. Oh, you're just going to keep on going. Wigs. Oh, my God. I mean, I make all my wigs. Well, most of them, 90%. But You um, do. You go live. Yeah, Erica taught me how to do hair. Erica taught me how to ba basically how to do like a little tease and style. And she goes, girl, just always do your hair and always mess with it. And I promise you're going to learn it and you're going to turn it. And that's what I did. Every time I had the show, even if I just bought the wig, I'd be like, okay, well, let me just tease like a little bang. So I started getting used to the tease and I started getting used to the molding and I started 
you know, that, and that's how I learned. So I'm going to give you about two minutes to read somebody really quick. And um, here she is. <laughs> Girl, I'm going to read you. I'm <laughs> so all day long, I said, bitch, did I all contact? I hate surprises. She knows. I hate surprises. <laughs> and people tried. Axel, every year for my birthday, would try to surprise me with my friends. A perfect example, one, one time, <laughs> we did a birthday. And it was, we were going to the pool. It was my birthday. And I'm like, okay, well, let's go to the pool. Axel's like, okay, well, let's just a bit and blah, blah. I was like, no, I want to go to the pool and I want to go to the pool now. Bitch, mind you, I turned the corner and I start walking to the little neighborhood pool. And here's everybody trying to go set up for the pool party <laughs> that Axel planned with the balloons and everything just because I was not letting up. I wanted to go to the pool. I hate surprises. So I told this bitch, what, did Raul contact you? She's like, Raul doesn't even know me like that. I'm like, bitch, she's been commenting on your shit, bitch. I know. Raul knows you. And she's like, no. I it was like the message. hardest secret to keep. I talked to you like probably 10 times a day. And it was like really hard. I had to put my mask on so you didn't see me lying. It was Girl, kind of weird. I, I don't want to. I don't ever let that happen to me again. She was and gagging all cry. day. She was gagging all day and just telling me, oh, my God, I want this over because I can't keep lying to her. This and that. <laughs> it was it was it was we a don't thing. lie to each other. Uh, <laughs> I tell this bitch it was all the, the thing. time. She'll call me and be going through it with work and. I'll be like, um, oh, girl, you're being a girl, and I'll hang up on her. And like, very like, I, I love you, bye. Like, stop being a fucking girl, because she goes through with it at work. She's go, like, I go through it. me a girl. And I'm like, no, bitch, you're like, being a girl. But I am a girl. <laughs> That's what she says. Winnie, thank you so much. A lot of the things that, you know, that I'm doing today, I wouldn't have been able to, like, do it if it wasn't for this girl. Okay, so you're going to call me out now. I'm like, I have to. Okay. I have to. I have to because it was such a great thank help you. because this is like a tribute. I When I do this, yeah. I want people to feel good about <laughs> what we're saying. I want to elevate somebody's character. I want to pay homage to what you've done. And, you know, so... Uh, for this to be good, I always need the help. So, um, so thank you, Winnie, for thank doing you for that. Doing this. Um, I love you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm all right. You. So we're gonna go on, Winnie. You gotta go. You gotta go. I love you. Love Bye, you guys. Baby. All right. So um, I know she's adorable. We gotta let's talk about Continental. But before we do, I'm gonna oh, play God. again my video from my company, the sponsors of this show. Yes. Baby, because people need to know because I'm out of work. And whenever we go back to events and doing the you things that I do, need I need gigs. Them. Absolutely. This is a lot of work for me. Um, and I do this with the love of my heart, baby. But I also need to work. So here we go. Enjoy. <laughs> So yes, so yes, so that's me, and that's what I do. So support <laughs> the gigs, yes. the gigs, the gigs. We just have like support, and that's the thing. After all of this is done, like everybody's supporting. I love watching the girls' lives. I love watching Chabelle's live. I love everybody, Stasha, everybody, because you see the support, and right. then you see the extra bullshit, and you're like, y'all really are we really right. fighting? How are you fighting with people you can't even see? Like right. you, you're not even having interactions with them. So it's so beautiful to see the support. And after all of this, we extremely need the support. So if you can go to the bar and tip the girls who have been out of work, tip those bartenders, like, because we need it. It's it, we've been out of work, girl. And you too, like yeah. support every business that you can even gay owned restaurants and businesses and bars. We need the support. We really do. So let's talk about Continental, but I ran out of wine, girl. So to talk about Continental. John, tell DeMarco just texted to me that she knew. That Winnie told her. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, I know she's yeah. in there making comments. Okay, here we go. She's in there fucking ready. morning face. I'm going to get her too. <laughs> <laughs> what is your most memorable moment during your reign as Miss Continental Plus? Reigning with Mocha and Nick and Electra. My God, I don't, I can't um, express my love for them. Like, it was my first national reign. It was Nick's first national reign. It was Mocha's like 25th national reign. <laughs> like, it, it, it was just 
so Electra, uh, another fucking person I've looked up to forever. My my big my baby biggin. She calls me baby biggin. But um, it was just such an amazing year to be able to share that together with them. You know, the iconic Electra, and then like I said, me and Nick were from Orlando, and then Mocha. That year was so controversial when she won because she finally got her dream after trying so many years. I'm like, bitch, I get to reign with her. You know, it was just amazing. You know, I spoke to Mocha earlier um, and I think she might be watching the show because I tagged her because I'm trying to get her to get, you know, to do an interview with me. Um, and she okay. did tell me, um, tell her that I love her, you know, because I, she knew that it was going to that I was going to be talking to you tonight. So I'm just relaying the message to so, you know, I like never knew I would be as close. To, uh, to so many Nicole, Nicole Love Dupree, like Continental brought me to these friendships. Angelica Sanchez, well, we were friends before that, but well, that's what I'm gonna me. ask you right now. I wanna I want you to tell me what has Continental given you and what have you given Continental? Continental gave me everything. I I could not thank Jim Flint and that system for making that system because if it wasn't for them. I would not be able to put myself together. I love you, Angelica. I, I would not be able to put myself together the way I do. I could never have gotten through Drag Race. I could never be, a lot of people look at my details. They're like, girl, she's done from the earrings to the hair, to the shoe, to the anklet, to the toe ring, whatever the case may be. The details that I do is because of Continental. Running in that pageant, yes, girl, Continental Plus. Running in that pageant, a lot of the newer age kids are looking at Drag Race, okay? Although Drag Race is an amazing, phenomenal show, Drag Race does not teach you how to do drag. It teaches you what a girl can look like when she's given a certain amount of time to get an outfit together. Hi, Reggie. I could not have done Continental without Reggie. Reggie did my hair every single year I did Continental. Like, it's a team. But Drag Race is teaching the kids, you know, oh, well, you can tune in every week and see this girl, this girl, do a sickening look. But you don't know how to do it. So as I was competing for this year of Continental is because when I just did Miss Continental is because I wanted to bring those fans into the Continental pageantry circuit, which Kennedy is doing as well with Miss Gay US of A. Like they're not used to pageants. Alaska, Naomi Smalls, Detox. Oh my God, I'm forgetting another one. Who else came that night? A bunch of my drag race sisters came. Thank you, Nicole. Came that night to Miss Continental. Alaska, when I left after the after the top five, I didn't make the five, and I left. Alaska had came outside, her mouth on the floor. She said she had never seen anything like this, and that's what I want them to experience. What we get to experience: win, lose, draw, whatever. Pageantry is has nothing compared to what RuPaul's Drag Race is. Although an amazing platform, an amazing experience, I've been to both as my other sisters that have been on it, and also our pageant title holders. We know that there's a big difference. And I just want to bring that arena to this arena. Let's watch some of the most memorable continental moments from you. Continental 2010, Roxy Andrew. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make me feel. That's just the way you make
Roxy, tell me, what made you go back and compete for Miss Continental? I missed it. Oh, my God, I missed it. I, I, I toured the world, and there's nothing I can't express unless you've been in a pageant what it feels like to get ready for, for it, like preparing for it. I, like I said, I went back to Continental to try to bring the audience there. Pageantry is like no other, especially Continental. And I only say Continental because that's what I have experienced. I don't, I don't say US of A, I don't say EOI because I don't know those experiences, although I would love to have them. I can't speak for that. I can only speak for what I want and what I, you know, witnessed. It's a fair pageant. It's the promoters are in love. You're, you're treated like royalty. And, uh, you know, you've had many formers on the show. We all speak so highly of it for a reason. And it's worth it. It's, it really is worth it. The first year I competed, I lost. And it it was like, you won. I had so many um, people that followed me and requested me to be at their city. That was the first time I ever started traveling, was just from going and competing. I lost. But I just went and made an, an impression. Who is that girl? Who's that girl that did that one talent? She didn't even make the 12, but I'm still thinking about that girl who did that talent. We all do it. I sit now with the formers and we're like, Miss Thing broke it tonight, bitch. Y'all might laugh on her and sleep on her, but Miss Thing broke it tonight. It, it's just what happens. You were know? you disappointed? I was not disappointed. That Continental this past year was my favorite time competing that I've ever competed. And I didn't win. And that was fine with me. But the reason I say that is because I didn't need it. I wanted it. When I competed before, I needed and wanted it. I needed that exposure. I needed that name. I needed that crown. I, I needed to be a part of the sisterhood. I'm already a part of the sisterhood. I wanted that crown to help bring that exposure to the pageant because a lot of the pageantry systems, as I said in my live, and we're not going to get into that and stuff, I spoke I spoke very, Nicole Love, she knows, she tried to read me for it. She said I sounded bitter. I wasn't bitter. The reason being is I, I'm very emotional. I speak with my hands and I speak, you know, I'm a Cuban and Puerto Rican, bitch. That's just how I do. But I was, I, it, it was the best experience I ever had competing. And I wanted it so bad for those reasons to bring that arena to pageantry. And they say that, you know, um, what was it that I was saying? I was interview winner because I it was like, why isn't Continental at DragCon? Why isn't why isn't the entire court sitting in the only majestic, you know, these kids don't know pageantry. And if you had the girls, this court that we have right now, the reignings, are gorgeous. If they were sitting on thrones, I would be like, okay, I don't want to meet this girl, but I need to know what this is. You know, there's drag queens walking everywhere, spending thousands upon millions of dollars on drag. They obviously want to invest money into what this is, why not show them? And that's what I said, and I, I hope they get it together and do that, but that was kind of things I wanted to bring to Continental. There was a controversy right right, right after with the owners of Angel City Continental. I have known you for a long time, and I know the kind of person that you are, and I know that these people are pretty awesome too. They're, they're good individuals. Amazing. Too. Now, that, now that some time has passed, mm -hmm. is there a possibility that you all can move past those differences that you had? Okay. Rewind back to my family and me, how I am. I just keep moving forward. When the situation happened with Angel City, first of all, still till this day, bitch, the top of the list for promoters, the top of the list of treatment, the top of the list of professionalism, the top of the list for, I've never been to a preliminary like they hold. Treated like a queen. If I needed, we had fans, bottled waters, Red Bulls in a dressing room downstairs that, I mean, they had our runners going to get this stuff. What do you need? They were spending crazy money for what we needed because they love the passion and the art so much. One thing I don't stand for and do not appreciate, everybody makes mistakes, but don't tell me one thing and do another. And I'm not bashing them, but that's just how I feel. Don't do one thing. You felt a certain type of way about my life. And then you went on to speak publicly a different way. So then we moved past it, past it with each other. And then there was nothing. No text, no nothing. And I didn't text them either. It works both ways. Then I saw the flyers for the prelim for Yesha. Love my Yesha, bitch. That's my motherfucking sister from down south, baby. But I was not included. Asked for the date. I was not asked if I was open. I was not asked to come back. I was not dethroned. I was not contacted. Nothing. So am I allowed to feel a certain type of way? I believe so as the queen. 
there were people that were being, Kaina got invited back. Desi got invited back. Everybody, there are four, they took eight contestants. They only had to take two, four if they wanted to. So you're bringing back to a preliminary to crown somebody, but you never asked me to come. And I don't want to start drama on here because it's not this kind of place because I've moved past it. But all I want to say is that if they're watching, I was hurt by it. If your intentions were to hurt me, you hurt me. I have never, like Chantel says, you hurt me. But I was never, I never did you wrong. Like you never did me wrong. Like don't let, let we move past this in text message, your post. So why would you not invite your queen? Because I'm the queen. Okay. So I'm going to go back and ask you that same question again. And it's okay. a simple answer. Okay. I know that what everything you just said and, mm -hmm. um, and at one point, you know, there was this and now there's this. Is there a possibility that you all can move past those differences that you had? Always. You can always move past things, but I don't forget. I don't forget. And the treatment that I got, I'm not saying I'm the victim. I'm not saying feel sorry for me, for everybody watching, 250 people watching. Don't feel sorry for me. But what I want is for them to correct their mistake for not inviting their queen that they did not dethrone for any sort of reason to a preliminary. And the answer is I'm I'm booked, I'm busy. Like, if you want to call me and tell me a date, I will. Do I, you know what I gave up to? And it doesn't even matter. I gave up a $7,000 gig that night to compete as I'm at the airport to go to Texas because I wanted to go back to um, Continental. And I said, I'm going to do Angel City. I gave up $7,000 of booking that night to drive to Miami, it's an AIDS walk thing. And I gave it up to go to this pageant because that's how much I wanted to be at Continental. It was never about the money. You can have all the money in the world, but I wanted to be Continental. I was gonna go do this preliminary. I made them a promise. I showed up, I did my job and I won. So why am I, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Is there a possibility? Yes, there's always, okay. I said yes, yes, all there's right. a possibility. Okay, okay, let's do it as that. Let's end, <laughs> let's, end in a, let's end in a positive answer. The answer uh, is there, yes. I will. They yes. are amazing. Those two are amazing people. If you don't know them, get to know them. It just yeah, happened that we have awesome. a situation. That's it. Let's talk about drag race then. So I'm not going to sit here and ask those same questions that you get asked all the time in the red carpet <laughs> okay. in every single interview in every single podcast it's like we know girl we know who's the favorite we know who's this so you know i'm gonna go back a few years and i'm gonna play a clip where you answer a few of these questions that everybody wants to know so um so i don't have to do it all right okay okay what has been the most exciting thing meeting rupaul oh my god legend beautiful goddess looks just like her pictures up close this close just beautiful just absolutely beautiful. So what has been your most most favorite aspect of since being announced on the show? Uh, my favorite thing about being on the show? Um, meeting all the girls. I love meeting other drag queens and seeing where they come from and actually how they do drag because I feel every drag queen does it differently. And uh, just learning how they do it and getting some tips. Always learning. Out of the past four seasons, who have been inspirations for you? Um, Raja, Yara Sophia, the creative girls. Um, Carmen Carrera, the way she can put something together really, really quick out of nothing. I, I'm that kind of drag. So. <laughs> so you're more of the artistic side when it comes to drag. Artistic and the beauty side, yeah. I like. I, I pride Did you myself. say that this is the fishiest season out of all five seasons? Somebody did say that. It was the fishiest season. We are all fishy, extremely fishy, yes. <laughs> did you think that made it a little bit more challenging since everybody tends to have their fishy side? Yeah, when you come in thinking you're going to be one of the fishy girls and then you look around and all other 13 girls are fishy, you're like, okay, well, that's out of the bucket because they're all pretty, <laughs> but yeah. Is there anything coming up in the future that you're excited for people to know about? A lot of things coming in the future. Just keep an eye out. Roxy Andrews on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. Yes. Facebook, Erica was Twitter, supposed to be my date know. that night and she was with her mother. Who? Erica. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so you're on Facebook, on Twitter, OnlyFans, where else? Uh, what? Uh, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram. Sorry. I started thinking about that. So, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All the, all uh, it's all Roxy Andrews. Oh, no OnlyFans? OnlyFans. No, I said after that episode on All Stars, I showed up because maybe the DMs was popping. <laughs> Let and me now you. think I'm a bottom, baby. Do you got <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. Do you this know that kind of show? Do you feel pressured by all the attention that, you know, of always trying to be this person that people expect you to be? Yes. Yes. And and no. Yes and no. No, absolutely yes. Okay. Only. Only yes. Because I had a hard time at Continental 
this past time and last year because yes, I'm Roxy. Yes, I've achieved, you know, whatever you want to say. Yes, you know, I, 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 I've taken good care of myself in my career, but I'm still so self aware, like self, uh, what was the word? I'm sorry, what word? Sequence. Um, I'm so like, huh? Self conscious. Self conscious, and I'm I'm my worst critic. So everything I presented, y'all yeah, going there, I was like, bitch, it's sick, man. We're gonna turn it. We're gonna turn it. Then you get on that stage, and you're like, oh my god, people hate me. People love me. Uh, they can't wait to see me. They're not screaming. What did I do wrong? I'm not doing enough. Did I spend enough money? Like, it, it's uh, and I'm like, you look hideous. You're too fat. You're too. You didn't get skinny enough. Or this gown doesn't fit you. And it, it was just so much that when I walked away from it, like I said, it was my favorite time ever competing because I put all that out. I still get nervous. I'm not a cunt. I don't go out there like, bitch, you can't touch me. I have these motherfucking Louboutins on. So what? That doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is if I'm doing my job. And it was just like, I think people expected me to be this, you right. know, what they see in pictures. And it's not, that's not me. I'm so, I'm like the most... When it know. comes when it comes to drag race, if you could go back all the way back, what is the one thing you would have done completely different? Been friends with Jinx Monsoon. <laughs> 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 I would have. I would have been like, baby, come over here. Let me <laughs> yes, child. Let me contour your nose the way it's supposed to be. I would have been single, child. Just been nice to that woman. If I didn't say, if I didn't, I didn't say, and she was such a nice girl. She really was. And it was just my inner pageant girl that was just like, Arr! but she really was a nice girl. I don't know, child. You know, there's another fe uh, fellow uh, drag race uh, queen who's also your best friend. And detox. That's detox. What is it about that hilarious and over-the-top talented queen that you like so much? The fact that we started not only drag together, we have ridden this fantasy of drag together. Like, literally. We started at Pulse together. We painted up in the little corner just being the only boogers. Like, thinking that these clothes from Ross were finna turn the party when we go downstairs. And like, it's this whole roller coaster. And then the fact that we both got on the same season and then toured together. And then we got on All Stars together and got to share that and just becoming famous in the gay world and, you know, out there. And it, it, we've come from nothing and now we're something, you know? And, well, you and, know. And she's never, we've never changed with each other, ever. You know what's coming. Bitch. Let All me right. Get to Look, just in case. <laughs> just remember to tap the little thing for the, for the sound. All right. Yeah. Oh, hello. It's me, Detox, as you can tell. <laughs> Listen, Mama's getting some more work done. Shut up. Listen, I just want to say how much I love you and how proud of you I am and how constantly inspired I am by you. You know, we've been going on close to 20 years of friendship, and I can't wait to spend another 20 with you. You continue to grow and have been a constant source of inspiration and support to me and thousands of other people out there in the world. And for that, I will be eternally grateful to you. I love you so, so much, and I can't wait to see you again. <laughs> Bye, bitch. Hoyas. <laughs> see that bit it's always been like that and you meet girls like there's i'm not going to mention any names but sometimes the celebrity and the tv show doesn't get them but it changes them it changes them with an aura like and it's girl at the end of the day i always say on this show we're all men with wigs like nobody's better than the other when you go to your gigs none of us are beyonce none of us are, are madonna be careful what kind of coins you're asking for because at the end of the day, they have to... I'm still working. Fully booked, if it wasn't for Corona. Fully booked since my season. I try to tell the girls, that's not arrogance. That's me trying to tell you, I know the formula. Listen to me. Y'all stop being cocky. Stop being grand. Stop treating those showgirls different. Why y'all quitting your daytime jobs? Don't quit your daytime jobs. And no offense to everybody else who's done this. I don't want to think that I'm attacking anybody because I'm not. I'm just saying... Stick, stick with your day job. Don't move to Los Angeles. Don't move to LA. If that's where life takes you, more power to you. But don't just do it because you think that's the stipul like the stipulation or what you have to do now. You're a superstar. Let's move. Sit down. Think about it. Invest your money. Save your money. And don't become Madonna or Beyonce because at the end of the day, we're not that. Speak on it, girl. Oof. It's just what it is. It, it is what it is. And people are worth money. 
don't get me wrong, bitch. If you can get, I have gotten some coins, bitch. But I'm saying there's a time and a place. Remember the bar that you're at. You're not dumb. Do your do your business aspect of this uh, career that we call drag. Mm -hmm. How many people fit into this club? How much are they charging at the door? Do you think they can physically pay you and make a profit to keep these clubs open to book the next girl next week? No, they can't. The the you know it's not it's not to make it it's to maintain it consistency is the key you know and to yes. maintain it you have to have some kind of mind you know you have to and have I this business time frame yeah through continental you have to it have this frame of mind that yeah. it's gonna you know allow you to maintain yourself and be consistent in whatever product is it that you're selling you know know um, your worth but don't think let me tell otherwise. you something. Now that we're on this topic, because I wasn't going to bring anything up because I was bitter a few days ago and a lot of you reached out to me and I read online, baby, and this <laughs> and that. You but mad, you know, girl. I was mad. But you know, that one queen, girl, you know, I that one queen said to me something, you know, that I have this little show, a little talk show to try to stay relevant. And that's not the case. You know, I don't, I don't no. have to explain myself, you know, this and that. But the relevancy, when, when someone is relevant, it speaks for itself. You know, people speak you know, on, on, on the, they can back it up. There's certain people when they have a persona and, and they're respected and they admired and, and they have some kind of relevancy. It's because they can back it up. The work shows for itself. And that's mm -hmm. the same thing that I always tell people, you know, you don't have to go around proving anything or, or posting and doing the most for people to see, you know, how you, how you know that you're worth something is because your work speaks for yep. itself. You know. It does speak for itself. And like I told you, it, it all goes back to Continental. You, the, Some of these girls are traveling the world for five, $6,000 a night, if not more, and they're wearing the same costume. And I'm not reading them, but I'm reading you, bitch, because you're all my sisters. Like, you're getting paid this much, and these girls that are getting paid this much are turning the party every single week at their nightclub, but you came in as a special guest. You're wearing the same thing you wore for the last 10 cities. And I hope the Drag Race girls are watching, because you can't do that. You are... What and, and like I said, Continental taught me that because I wanted to look like everything when you're all of us formers. Nicole loves in here every time she goes to watch that pageant. She is fashion head to head to toe, bitch. Can she walk up in there? Say for the people in the back, look, she just wrote when she walks up in there, she's done. Do you think Nicole needs to go in there in an evening gown and her hair twisted up and just spending hundreds of dollars, if not whatever? It she doesn't. She can go in a, a pair of slacks and a t shirt and watch it with, with daytime face because she's a wet woman. But anyways, but listen, uh, <laughs> being relevant, being relevant. No, but I'm just saying, like, to you be, don't have to do all that, but we do it. So it's, it, yeah, we do it. But we know we don't do it, but we don't like to stay relevant. We do it because we are relevant. You know, relevancy right. comes within ourselves. You know, it's a thing, you know. Hello, so somebody. whoever is complaining, whoever's complaining about, you know, at anybody else being yes. relevant or not relevant is because obviously they're not. Yeah, that part. And you got to stay relevant, bitch. So change the motherfucking costumes and change your numbers that you're doing and look like something when you get somewhere because you're getting paid $5,000, bitch. Look like something. Let me tell you something. Let's change the subject because I've been drinking. I'm, this is going to turn into a reading yeah. session. Let you me know? drink my H2O. Let me drink my pink <laughs> Whitney. Right, Nicole? <laughs> you have an international platform and a voice that is heard around the world. I want you to tell me in a few words, what is your message? My message is stay true to yourself and never get too grand for your own how's that saying never get too grand for your own britches or i don't know but yeah something oh, like you that because you're latin but always stay true to yourself because nobody in this world of drag they want to say oh this drag is you know there's a big problem happening now with who's a man and who's a woman and who's this at the end of the day we have to stop fighting each other so in that i'm going to use my platform for this Stop fighting within our community. We're already fighting such a big fight with Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter and Gay Lives Matter and White Lives Matter and all this stuff. Stop fighting within our own community because it's just giving the people more ammo to talk about us. And if we're degrading each other on stupidity online, then it's like, let's just move past it and we can circle back in a little while. We can circle back and, and read that bitch that read you during these times. But just right now, we can't see each other. We're not bothered, bitch. Hit block and keep it pushing. Like, the more we're fighting online and fighting with each other, like I said, it just needs to stop at this time. There's way too many people dying. 
There's way too many people there. You know, I asked one of your, you know, friends, you've known this person for a long time and, you know, she admires your craft. Um, exactly that, you know, about your message, about your platform. This is what she had to say. So what I want to say about Roxy is that the one thing that separates Roxy from the rest of a lot of girls on Drag Race that I've seen, when they come out, she continues to teach her platforms. She continues to speak her mind about politics and things that are important to us. And she's educating young people. When a lot of people who are on the TV show, they just go off into their land and they really only worry about themselves. And instead of furthering, you know, the craft that Roxy perfected. And it's really nice to know that I had a part in the beginning of that and spreading my values to her just as much as she's spreading them to people right now. It's still ranged. Baby, that bitch put me in my first pageant. She said, bitch, you're going to do it. You're, we're going to make you a gown. We're going to figure this out. And if it wasn't for her, I would have never done pageants. So like, you, a great friend has never changed. I always say, bitch, you only call me when you need something. But I love that bitch to death. I'll, I'll do anything for her. You have had a good run, and you're still going. Um, let's see of some, some of your most memorable moments from your participation in oh. RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. My name is Roxy Andrews, and I'm 28 years old. I am a pageant girl. Big hair, big makeup. From head to toe, it's a Roxy Andrews project. I'm so excited to be here today. Well, let's get started. Boom! Who cares? <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of hearing about that bitch. Yeah! Where my people at? Where my people at? Bam! Oh! Surprise! Congratulations. Oh. You are the winner of this challenge. Congratulations. You are the winner of this week's challenge. Doing nothing wrong. So don't tell me nothing. I'm just gonna have fun. So keep the party ah. jumping to the side. Yeah. And now they don't I love you. I love you. I am a thick and juicy girl, and that makes me so proud. I could never let you down. And I will be one hell of a superstar. I just want to win this so bad, and it's what I love to do. It's my passion, it's my art. I am America's Next Drag Superstar. I know you love me, baby. That's, That's why, why you brought, brought me here. here. I was a bitch on season five. I'm here to make it right. Give, give me a cool intelligent, I'll give you what you like. I'm full of tricks, baby, just like on Halloween. A room full of monsters and it makes me want to scream. I gotta get this right so you don't waste your time. Not like my comedy, I'm killing on this run. I'm gonna show you what I Is there anything you'd like to say to me? I'm Roxy Andrews and I'm here to make it clear. I know you love me, baby. That's why you brought me here again. Well, look at you spitting them rhymes. <laughs> How'd it feel? How'd it feel yes. to go back? It's crazy to think that was so long. The beginning of it was so long ago. To me, it was like eight, nine years ago. And then to go from that to All Stars about four years ago, and then now to be on the last episode was just utterly amazing. Yes, how, Freckles, that's another one. Could not have done it without him. How, how, well, how was that experience? I mean, they called you back and then you slayed it. And then, I mean, everybody's been wanting to talk to you since they the, the show aired on Friday till now. You've gotten a million calls and a million things, you know. Thank God I booked I you before, today, honey, because look. The thing with interviews is, a lot of people in the business think that I'm like shut out. Sometimes I shut myself out. Like my ch my children would always tell me this, like, girl, you need to do more. You need to do this. I'm all about never overexposing yourself. And there's a lot of, hey, Trinity, don't overexpose yourself. There's a time and place for everything. And some of the interviews that I'm asked for, I'm very picky. And I was so happy to do yours because I, as of watching it, I told you, I watched Maya Douglas's. And although Layla, everybody did so amazing. And I love them all. Uh, Tiffany. They've all done so well, and I, I love how heartfelt and the, the time and effort that you put into it. I don't want to just do an interview to talk about Drag Race. It's filmed, 
everyone sees it. If you want to know my opinions, I have put it out there because obviously I've been asked in somewhere on a magazine about my experience on Drag Race. It's it's already been told, you right. know? So just to sit there with a different person to tell the same story over and over again and the bus stop thing and all that. Like I know, girl. I don't want to do that either. This because it's personal and I tagged you and I want all my fans to see this and I will continue to tag the video because it is a very personal interview. And Nicole's interview, like I, I just love them. You're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm and I'm and and that's and that's the message. That's the message. That's what I wanted to achieve, girl. You know what? I did this to talk to people because you know I love talking, love, you know, we have that connection, we have that thing, you know, that we love to be social. We're used to going to the pageants, to the clubs, and you know, doing all this, you know. So there's so much yard work I can do, clean closets in my house, baby. I have nothing else to do. So yeah. it was created specifically to, you know, for this, you know, mm -hmm. to to talk positive, to to yeah. elevate each other, to, you know, to have that kind of connection so that people can see past the stage and look at the person. So, girl, after that, you were quick and this happened. Tell me <laughs> about the merch. The merch. So you can get it at dragqueenmerch.com. Um, so this kid drew this picture and I posted it. And his name is Eric. Oh, my God, he's going to kill me. His name is Eric. And I tagged it on my Instagram. He sent me this picture. And we get tagged in a lot of pictures and stuff. But it was literally like the next day. So I posted it. And so many people wrote on there, girl, you got to make this a shirt. Girl, you got to make this a shirt. Well, these people at Drag Queen Merch are just so amazing, you know, uh, and they're very quick. And they put it on a shirt, and here we are. You get a mask. You can get everything you want. They can let's, juice, um, you know, my thick and juicy girls and boys. <laughs> let's um, let's give him some life. And his his Instagram is Eric Varsity. There we go. Eric Varsity. Yes, that's yeah. there we go. That's the artist of the of the drawing. And you know, it's a caricature, but I just was like, Miss Thing, you got everything right. Like it was really good. And I I like to promote other people. If you're gonna sit there and draw me. Bitch, I'm going to put it on my Instagram, just like fan art. These little kids draw the, what we might see as a little, you know, stupid ass picture. But bitch, they sat and drew you. That's another thing for these drag race girls. Take accountability of who you are, you have touched. If somebody sat there and drew, took time, I don't care if it was a pencil picture. I have it. I have it here in my walls in my drag room. I have all the fan art I've ever gotten. I've seen girls literally take the fan art after the meet and greet and dump it in the trash. And I'm not bad tacking anybody. I'm just stating what's real, what I've seen. And he drew it. I posted it. They want it on a shirt like that. It was on a shirt. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Yes, um, and I thank Eric for that. I, I, we're going to move on to the next segment. I want to tell okay. everybody right now that this is the moment where you ask um, questions oh, to Roxy. Lord. We're not, I'm, I, we don't have time to ask all, you know, put up all the questions. She can't answer all of them, but I'm going to pick and choose, <laughs> you know, some of the questions that you're going to put out. So this is the time to ask her the questions. And I have one more final question for you, which I'm going to do at the, <laughs> at the very, at the very end, end. Yes. at the very end. So you ready for yes. people's choice? There we go. Let's do it. All right, so let's wait. Let's see. Do we have uh, some questions? Of course we do. And of course it's Sasha's in here. Desi, you done asked this to every motherfucking person, bitch. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Desi. It was so <laughs> he asked that literally every interview you do. I see him on there. Who's your favorite Mr. Continental? Um, what's my next pageant? I don't... No, but I am. So Tandy and Erica always wanted to do Miss Black Universe. Not saying I'm going to go run in there and don't start putting this on all the blogs, but that is something that if I have a chance to fulfill their dream of doing that pageant, then that's something I'm going to look into, but I have a lot of studying to do. When COVID is done, where can I see you perform? At Southern Nights Orlando, because it's not looking like I'm getting on a plane anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, what inspire you, your lip sync assassin look? So for my lip sync, they called me and gave me the song 48 hours before I flew out to film it. The song choice that they chose was not to my liking, and I'm not trying to be a diva, but I'm not going to say what the name of the song was. The song was just so far off of my repertoire. 
I expected to learn a new song that I didn't do. I expected a song that I wasn't familiar in my repertoire, but I wasn't ready for this song. And when they send it to me, I just absolutely could not do it. And um, uh, so I wrote the, the producers, mind you, 48 hours. I said, thank you for the opportunity, but unfortunately I can't come. And I'm not competing for $100,000, so I don't have to be there. This is sticking to your guns, bitch. Stick to your guns because you never know what's going to happen. Follow your gut. And I told them, I, I don't feel like this is going to, going to look good on you guys or me or to the country artist that this was. So uh, I'm going to have to step out and not, not go. Mind you, in my mind, I'm like, girl, you're getting an opportunity back on television and you're just going to squander it. But I just couldn't do it. So they found another song and I said, let's go. And it ended up being Ariana. So, yeah. So that's who, the story on that. Who taught you how to sew? Uh, myself. Uh, through, throughout the weight gain and weight loss, uh, my clothes, you know, if they were big, I'd have to take them in to be smaller and just taking things in, I would see how things were made and I would copy that onto fabric and ruining a lot of good, good fabric along the way. Cause I always like expensive things. I'm like, well, let me buy this expensive fabric and then completely fuck it up. So <laughs> what has been your proudest moment to date? Winning Miss Continental Plus. When can I have a picture with Roxy? He's asking Greg, baby. I don't know. <laughs> Whenever he opens his bar so I can make money. If you were asked to go back to the next All-Stars, would you? I would not. The reason being, and they, I was asked this the other day. The reason being is there's newer girls. At the end of the day, guys, I would love to go back. If it was a pageant, it would be different. Nowadays, there's newer girls. There's new blood. Yes, I feel like I would do better than I did on this past All-Stars, but... It's a television show, guys. I, I'm a realist, and I know what the what the deal is. You guys watch it before uh, on television. You know how it works. And my time has come and gone on that particular television show. But I'm thankful for everything I got on there. But I wouldn't go back. Will you be going back to Continental? Mm. Never say never. You have had many years of go, go, go. Are you able to enjoy this time off, or do you feel like you should be doing something? Oh, hi, Brian. Um, I, I'm enjoying, well, I, as soon as this started, I, my lease was over in the other house. So I had to come to this one. And so I actually took the time and actually moved in taking my time and I enjoyed it. So it, it's kind of like sometimes God in life, I believe in God. So God tries to slow you down. And I feel like what we're supposed to be doing in this pandemic is reflecting on the choices and friendships and decisions that we made throughout our lives and, and try to fix some things. Can you talk about the time when you were about to stop doing drag? Oh, Piggy, you are messy. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. You want the tea. Um, oh, wow. So she, Piggy's one of my best friends. <clears throat> and there was a time where I was just done with drag. I was quitting and I made a whole letter. I put it on my Facebook. It's probably still up somewhere. Somebody has it. It was just the same stage, the same performances, the same crowd. I just wasn't feeling uh, inspired to do anything. So I was just like, you know what? I was done with the drama. I'm done. And I said that I was going to be done. And I said, but I want to try to do two things. And if one of them happens and I'm supposed to continue to do drag, then God will show me a sign. I auditioned for RuPaul's Drag Race and I was going to do Miss Continental back in the day, like 2000. Uh, I don't know. I'm horrible with dates, like 12, 13, something like that. Like, maybe 13, eight years ago, nine years ago. So I went into West Virginia Continental and I won. I auditioned for Drag Race and I won and I got on. So I had to then call Jim Flint and we're not allowed to tell, which I didn't, but I'm like, Jim, I'm not gonna, even though I just won West Virginia Continental, I'm not gonna be able to come and compete because I have another obligation. And before I could say anything, he says, Roxy, I know what's going on. You're fine. It's okay. Come back when you're allowed to. And I couldn't have that. That man is amazing. That, that was your sign. Amazing. And it, it it just wasn't my time. But both things happened. So I looked at Angelica and I said, oh, girl, well, God's trying to tell me, bitch, you're not done. You know, I got to, you know, I speak to Dan often. And, you know, I know Jim watches the show. 2012. Um, the, the interviews and stuff like that. I also got a, got, a, got a text message from Marcus and Chelsea Pearl. They, all, they also watched the show. Oh. So, um, you know, what message do you have for them? Marcus and Chelsea, baby, 
Chelsea, words cannot express how much I love that woman. And I'm not finna cry again. But baby, that one, I know Angelica probably could cry about, and she's coming on your show soon. She is, yeah. Yeah. Baby, the Continental Plus girls and Chelsea, and they all have their own relationships with Chelsea. They're to me an item. And those two are one of the most, are two of the most realest people I've ever met. And that bitch does drag. Drag, like, bitch. Drag. Good motherfucking drag, bitch. And that is somebody, if you want to know where I get my motherfucking rhinestones and how it's about being shiny and feathers and wigs and Chelsea Pearl. Chelsea Pearl, Carmela Marcella Garcia. Dina like, Cass. The list go, oh this... my God, Dina Cass. Like Dina is, baby, a closet of doom. Like Desiree De Mornay, Ch Chevelle, like it's just girls that uh, are, inspire me all the time. And Chelsea is on the top of that list. And talking Marcus, about talking about Marcus Chevelle, is incredible. There you go. That's all you. What will someone have to do if you get him? He gonna have to fuck me for ten. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby. I go and cut up for Chevelle show. A plug to Chevelle show tomorrow night. Uh, our our in our view or our opinion. It's our opinion, baby. I get my key key on there, baby. What has been your favorite city to perform in? Oh my God, it was uh, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina, baby. Really? It was Why? Like I was Madonna. Really? Oh my God! <laughs> like I was scared for my life. It was that serious. Oh my like, God! And they walked thousands of people, and then I got up to the dressing room, which is all blocked off with security, like 20 security guards, bitch. Like, I'm the queen of Elizabeth. Every, like, two feet was a security guard, and I'm like, oh, girl, y'all really taking this drag race thing really serious. That's that like is amazing. Saying. But y'all taking this real serious. Girl, I peeked my head out of the curtain to the <laughs> thousands of people, lost their mind. I literally, I'm like, that's what Beyonce feels like. I could not believe my, my, I, I, I could, I was, like, stunned. I didn't know what to do. That must be the craziest feeling that just to have, like, oh, I mean, amazing, they don't right? Play South America, they are true and they are fans, ride or die, like uh, amazing, amazing. I mean, All we get them. we get our life, we get our life on this pageant theaters and stuff like that, but that must be like that's like real celebrity shit to them. To them, they can't believe that we are there, right? Like in the United States, we can travel here, we can travel there, but for us to get on a plane and th they have a lot of shady promoters down there that lie about girls coming. So for us to get on a plane and actually be in front of them, it means the world to them. And I, I would do that every day if I could. Well, I want to remind everybody, our cash up is up, baby. So if you like yes. the product that we have given you, it's the time to show it. If you love yes, them, take care of let all them all know right. it. Um, so why don't you help me out and do these commercials for me? So I'm going to do this first one. If you haven't okay. seen what this lady does, she does amazing work. She's lovely. She does. I she bought one too. is amazing. Sun of the Lights live feed, hair cell, um, every Saturday at 1 p.m. on her Facebook. I mean, I don't, even though I need some hair, I don't buy any, but I just tune in to watch her do the little 360 that she does. And then she turns around and she work. you know, she does a little oh, 360 and everything. She does the whole. Yeah, yeah the, the whole, yes, she's bitch. So yes, the, the whole entire thing. Like, no, yeah, baby. this sick thing. Um, tonight, right after uh, uh, Roxy Andrews, right here, we have an evening with Stasha Sanchez on Instagram, baby. She gives Man, it that's to my you. auntie. There you go. She was here watching earlier. She's probably getting ready. Her show's yeah. about to start sometime soon. Um, we have Trinity K. Bonet every Sunday. DK. And my auntie, Desri De Mornay, oh, has her show team. also coming up right now. Oh, it's starting now. Oh, 10 o'clock. Yes. Yeah, 10 o'clock. So we'll be on time. And Every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Central Time, which is 11 p.m. our time, baby. The our point of view our point with of view Chevelle Brooks. That's where it goes down. <laughs> oh yes, it does. And I talked about Zodiac because he gonna fuck me for ten. But um, <laughs> Desiree, <laughs> Desiree De Mornay, Flirt Nightclub, Tampa, Florida. She was the reigning Miss Continental Plus 2006. I'll never forget it. Right, 2006, and I told you I never know dates. I know this one. Baby, I walked in and I said, Tizaray. I think I was with Deranged or somebody working that night. And I was like, I'm I'm Roxy Andrews and um I'm going to go to Continental. I think I was just Roxy actually, but I was like, I want to go to Continental. And I was, she's like, Oh yeah, girl, do it. And she had just went to we always share the story, but Desiree is one of the people that was like, bitch, you could do it, do it. She's she's just amazing. That's that woman's heart and soul is just Ooh. pure. 
Good people. Pure. Tomorrow, I have a former Mr. G uh, Gay US of A, Michael LaMasters. Yes. Maybe he's going to be spilling some tea. And I'm going to ask the questions. Trust and believe I will be asking the questions, baby. That's Wednesday. And on Thursday, the legendary Jasmine Bonet. You know, she don't do, you know, no interviews just like this or, you know, for anybody. And I have to thank Nicole Love Dupree, my auntie Nicole, for making sure that she told Jasmine, you got to do this. So Wednesday, Michael, Thursday, Jasmine Bonet, I had a great time with you. Baby, Jasmine, that bitch don't play either. She don't. And it's going to, it's going to be, it's I, gonna, I learned some things about her that I did not know. And it's serious. Tell her, I remember when she was on the couch at Angelica's house with the pantyhose and the mirrors, making her outfit at, for the club. And they're like, bitch, watch everybody want this. She got to the dressing room and all the girls wanted to buy it. And she's oh. like, oh girl, this all just tied on me. <laughs> but baby looked like $5 million on that stage. Orchestrator. Um, it's amazing. But her backstory, her childhood, you know, there's certain things that we're going to learn about Jasmine that I, I mean, they're just impressive. So, oh. um, you got to tune in. You got to tune in. You got to watch this show because this lady is just amazing. I had such a great time with you. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you for letting me be here. Um, I miss you and I can't wait to see the wonderful things you're going to continue to be doing for yourself, for our community, the voice that you are and just who you are. And you, you're such a great friend to me. You always yes. answer my texts, which is a great always. thing because I know that you don't do that with a lot of people. <laughs> No, I do. I'm great at communication. Communication. <laughs> well, at least with me, you're amazing. So I want to thank you for that. I had a great yes. time. Great, great, great time. So I want to ask you um, three more questions. They're quick and short. And okay. um, who would you like to see me interview? Who? Oh, my God. That could go, it could go on and on and on. Just uh, give me Erica two names. Rose. Oh, yeah, she's coming. She's coming. Erica yeah, Rose. it's going to be good. What, and what is an Electra and Nikki Adams? And Nikki. Yep. I have a list. I have multiple trees. We, have... we always hear their voices. Yes. But Electra and motherfucking Erica, you don't always hear their insights and their voices. Yeah. It should Those be good. That... It should be good. It should be good. <laughs> and another person that I that I have on my list is Tiffany um, uh, uh, Fontaine Lamore and. Oh. Um, uh, Corny Van Wells is also has also Ooh. agreed. She's also agreed to do the interview. Monica Angela Monroe. Angela Carrera. Monica won't Monica do it. Monroe. I got she won't do it. She's not very savvy. I want call Tommy me. Ross too. Call me. I get I do. I gotta call me. I got Tommy <laughs> Ross too. I want to do Tommy Ross too. You know, it's all these all these many people. Okay, so there was if you one question, you can you can ask me one question. What would it be? Who's your favorite, Mr. Continental? Oh girl, come on! <laughs> girl, I thought here, I thought you were gonna hear and give me a fierce question. No, 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 um, one question for you. Um, what, what, what drives you to do what you do? Because you are a, a hustler. I call it hustlers, entrepreneur, CEO, business. You're your own. What do they call it? Your own businessman, like a. You're a one man show. What drives you to continue to do your your things even when sometimes they don't work out? It always works out. And I'm going to tell you why. And it's not to sound cocky, but people need to know their strengths, you know, and it comes by knowing yourself. And when you know your strengths, you know yourself and you know what you can put out there, you choose certain things that work for you and you make them succeed because it comes natural, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's. Everything that I've done, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional makeup artist. I've owned a salon. I've been the makeup artist, you know, in South America, teaching mm -hmm. workshops, teaching this. Um, I was in nightlife. I did drag and everything I did, yeah. I did it well. You know, I, I, I had shares in nightclubs. I had nightclubs. I, I was the boss. I was this. I ran that. Now, yeah. I, I, now I do the events and, I, and now I do this. And it's just love for, it's love for my community because everything that I do, it always goes back. To my community you know mm -hmm. um it's people need to know and understand that you know we grew up in a time where we still saw and appreciated drag family because we didn't have social mm -hmm. media we weren't in a time yeah. where we had certain things that could allow us to grow you know we had to depend on each other and yeah. and that's that's what i've done you know i've i've leaned on support from other people to be able and to we should still do that 
Yeah, the, we continue Just to do that. This is what we do. People lose it, but this is we still. This need is what that. we do. So yeah. what makes me do that? It's love. It's it's the yeah. knowing this knowing me, knowing my strengths, and knowing you know because I gotta make a livelihood, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 thank God, you know, because of that formula, because of knowing myself and knowing what product I can achieve and get out there. I just mm -hmm. I just make it happen and it's always everything I touch just turns into gold. <laughs> I love a hustler. Baby, I don't care if it's the homeless man on the street. If I see him busting his ass there every single day looking for change, I'm like, I'll give him a motherfucking dollar or 10 or 20. I've seen you out here every single day. Yeah, you might be getting drunk and everything, bitch, but it's not easy to sit out on the street right. every single day getting denied. So if you're gonna sit out there, bitch, every time I see you, I'm giving you a dollar because you a hustler, bitch. One more question, and it's the last question of the evening. Okay. What do you want your legacy to be? Oh, that family is chosen, not always given. Fam like, I want my story to be my legacy. I want, that, I want people to know that through it all, I... Like I, I persevered through everything I've been through and yeah, I'm thankful for everything, but I love you, Tasha. I have, I have persevered and many people do in their own different stories, but for my legacy, I just want, I, I shared my story luckily on a national platform, on an international platform. And I hope that it moves people to reflect on that. If anything like that was ever to happen to them or to choose drag. Why not? I try my best tonight to pay homage to the work that you've done to give you a tribute of the hard work that you put onto your craft and the person that who you are. I, I enjoyed myself with you. I want to thank you for accepting and saying yes to, to, to being here and conversing with me and sharing your story with all these people. And, um, you know, the love, the respect and the admiration that I have for you, you know, and it will oh, never, it never change. So don't go anywhere. We're going to, chat in a little bit but you know when okay. i say goodbye to everybody make sure that you tune in tomorrow <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in we love you and keep love supporting you. raul it's, uh, there's a, uh, a cash app and uh, amazing amazing shows everybody have a good night